let's go to the next one where it asks you what is the cause of airway obstruction in bronchial asthma so let us look at the first one whenever there is obstruction so you see you look at the bronchioles and these suppose I, I, I draw a bronchiole like this if there is anything inside the bronchiole that can cause obstruction or if the bronchiole narrows this way if the wall narrows that also can cause obstruction so you know these are the two ways that obstruction can occur or lastly if you know there's something compressing it from the outside like a tumor or something like that so those are the three possible ways that obstruction can occur so let's look at the first choice which says foreign bodies present in the bronchi now in bronchial asthma and if you think of it everybody who has bronchial asthma they don't necessarily have to have foreign bodies like something going inside in order to bring about the um, airway obstruction so therefore this is not the best answer so we you know we'll put a cross against that let's look at this one constriction of smooth muscle of the bron of the bronchioles now when the smooth muscle of the bronchioles if there if there is irritation the smooth muscles go into a spasm and hence the bronchioles become narrower and that causes the obstruction because now air air can't pass through so that is a more likely answer because every person who has bronchial asthma does not necessarily have to have a foreign body stuck in them whereas in asthma constriction of the smooth muscle can occur in every person who has the asthma which is what does happen so therefore this is the correct answer and if you look at the other choices ischemia of the bronchioles if there is ischemia that's not going to cause constriction instead what will happen the muscle there will die and chest wall deformities chest wall deformities will have suppose the chest wall like we saw in the previous situation where if there was scoliosis the chest wall is deformed that's not going to affect the bronchioles it's just going to affect the compliance of the chest wall so this also is not the right answer and so therefore the best choice is that this is the one that applies to every case of bronchial asthma this does not apply to every case of bronchial asthma hence this is not the right answer and let's look at the last um, question which asks you to identify the incorrect statement so here we are looking at um, let's look at this one pulmonary congestion will affect the respiratory membrane thickness now this is true the reason is pulmonary congestion will affect the respiratory membrane thickness if you look at the respiratory membrane and this is an alveolus and let me draw another alveolus here and this is a blood vessel in between the respiratory membrane is formed by the squamous epithelial lining of the alveolus, the basement membrane, the basement membrane of the capillary and the endothelial lining. So that, that's what it is. Now, if there is pulmonary congestion, and let me draw just one alveolus and the blood vessel up here. So the blood vessel is dilated. So let's say the blood vessel is dilated like this. A lot of blood inside the pressure increases fluid begins to go out so what happens the fluid now lies in this space so it kind of adds to the space to this respiratory membrane so it does increase the respiratory membrane thickness so this is a true statement hence uh, this won't be the choice let's look at the next one which says oxygen moves from the alveoli into the pulmonary capillaries as the partial pressure of oxygen is greater in the alveoli and hence this is again a true statement again if you look at the alveolus and the capillary membrane when you breathe in during inspiration you know your gaseous mixture enters in and here oxygen and carbon dioxide and nitrogen are there in that but we are only concerned with oxygen the pressure partial pressure of oxygen is more there is more oxygen in the inspired air so the partial pressure in the alveolus of oxygen is more let's look at the blood which is flowing in these capillaries this blood is coming from the right side of the heart it's deoxygenated blood so it has more carbon dioxide so the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is more in the alveolar capillaries and the partial pressure of oxygen is more in the alveoli so therefore oxygen moves into the capillaries and carbon dioxide moves out of the capillaries when it moves out of the capillaries into the alveolus this is then expired this oxygen moves in to the capillaries and these capillaries then become the pulmonary veins and then they go to the heart uh, and to the left side of the heart so therefore this also is a true statement 
So this isn't the right choice. Uh, let's look at this one. If alveoli in a certain area of the lung are not properly ventilated, blood is di diverted to areas with better ventilated alveoli. And if you think of it logically, if there's an alveolus which is really small and there's a capillary up here, there's no point in this capillary being dilated and having a lot of blood flowing because the exchange is not going to be much. Instead, if there is an alveolus which is well ventilated, what will happen is that you want to divert the blood from here. So here it will constrict, but in this area the capillaries will dilate so that gas exchange can occur in a proper manner. And this is what is called the ventilation perfusion ratio. So this again is a true statement. And let's look at the last statement which is says, it is not possible to hold your breath indefinitely as your muscles are not conditioned. Now this is not correct because you do, you're not able to hold your breath indefinitely, not because of your muscles, but because the carbon dioxide levels keep increasing in your blood. And when they keep increasing, carbon dioxide is the most powerful respiratory stimulant. It goes and stimulates the respiratory center and that makes you inspire. So you can't hold your breath indefinitely because the levels of carbon dioxide increase and that's the most powerful respiratory stimulant. So therefore, that is the right choice for this. Um, uh, so this one is the right choice for this question.